Et là, on regarde, il n'y a pas meilleur signe que de voir les surfeurs, voir la mer, voir les, euh, les oiseaux. Ouais. Un signe de tranquillité, de quiétude. Ouais, le Pacifique, quoi. Ouais, le Pacifique, ouais. J'avoue, là, j'ai un bon feeling, tu vois, d'être ici et de se dire qu'on on va commencer un truc vraiment... Euh... Bah, un truc qui nous appartient et euh, hier d'avoir rencontré John, moi j'ai vraiment hâte de, de voir le projet, de voir euh, un petit peu sa vie et puis euh, les, les gens euh, avec qui il passe du temps. Ouais. Bon. bon, on y va. Ça donne envie d'aller surfer ça. Allez, go On y go My name is John Whelan, I'm from Carlo uh, in Ireland, a small town, one hour south of Dublin. I First of all, I came to Peru in January 2007 and I moved to Peru full-time in February 2009. Help Them Hope is, is, is the project you're currently working on? Correct. It's a project I founded in uh, 2009, late 2009. I've been working on this for the last five and a half years now, more or less. Mm. And uh, currently we are serving people with disabilities in 12 different regions in Peru. Totally, totally started from scratch. I had an idea from when I first came to Peru, I volunteered in a home in, in Lima. And I opened the door and um, a few kids came running to me. Some kids with no arms and just one leg and another kid with severe burns. Uh, other kids then in wheelchairs, other kids using crutches, and they all just came running and hugging, and I'm like, hello, without a word of Spanish, like, uh, hola, adios, and that was it from mm. watching movies over the years. So it was this one and those, like, what do I do here? Am I able for this? And I'm like, no, I don't think I am. This is a big challenge. I didn't have this one in the script. But 24 hours later, you feel part of the home, the kids start calling you papi, and uh, you leave the role of a father figure to the kids in the home. And it was amazing, absolutely amazing. So, uh, so, so it, was a, it was an experience, it was a tough one to begin with. It was a challenging one, but then throughout the days, everything becomes normal and that's the way life is. Unfortunately, when it comes to the education for people with disabilities, uh, in the mainstream education, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So from that then, I said I would start a new organization, help them hope, to fund them for education. I guess uh, in a project like that, it's, uh, it's the people that, that make a difference and that make it worthwhile. No, definitely. Like, for example, Victor Hugo. Victor is a, he's a great guy. He also uses a wheelchair. Mm. At 21 years of age, he'd never been to school. His dream wasn't to get a degree. His dream was just to attend school. So I look, Victor, we'll get you there. So Victor started school, and his dream now is to study law. Buenos dias. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo va todo? Bien. 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 Puedes explicar un poco sobre tu trabajo que haces diariamente. Estoy en el colegio Los Urbanos de de Vitor en Ceres. Ingresaré a a la universidad para la facultad de de derecho. Es tu sueño, es, es un sueño bastante eh, importante para ti como, como... Así es, sí, así es. Estudiando, progresando, mejorando, güey. A, a pesar que a veces se enferma porque tiene varias, varias enfermedades, uh -huh. pero ahí está, sigue para adelante. Siempre adelante. Siempre adelante. Uh -huh. So currently we're in Tecnicayo, in El Hogar, 
San Francisco de Jesus, and this is the place where I first came to volunteer in January 2007. Was it a formative year uh, for you? Without a doubt. For me, uh, it was that spark that really put me on a path for where I've been for those last seven or eight years. Coming here and volunteering was an eye-opening, a life-changing experience. Like everything in life is always relative, but obviously when you're growing up in Ireland in a developed country where you have support from, a lot of support from family, support from the local health services and from education, we, we really have what we need. Um, coming here then and seeing the children here fight on a daily basis against very, very difficult circumstances, it made me realize how lucky I was growing up. But not only that, it made me realize determination and the motivation that these kids have to better themselves in life and not to get stuck down, not to get depressed, but to wake up every morning, face the fight, head on and do what they have to do. And for me, that was really, really motivating because sometimes we give out about this, that and the other, but really are the problems. I see kids here that have no legs, that have, have maybe missing, missing an arm, missing different things. And I see them every day with a smile on their face and taking the day head on. And I'm like, wow, if they can do this, why can't I do this? And why can't other people make a difference every day in our lives, even if it's on a personal level, or going one step further and helping people around you? I think it's a special place for another reason too, because uh, uh, in the courtyard, I've seen a place called uh, 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 physiotherapy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, uh, who was uh, who was working in this office? Yeah, very good question. Very good question. Uh, my my wife, uh, she worked here for seven years. So she was a physiotherapist for the children, and she had around forty patients. And I soon became her forty-first patient. In my childhood in Ireland was a very happy childhood. Um, very, very strong family. And my first travels were mostly in a summer spent working and traveling in, in Greece, in Cyprus, a lot of traveling in Australia. And on the way back from Australia, coming back to Ireland, I spent some time in Cambodia. And for me, that was really one of those kind of big sparks and one of my um, first changes that brought me to Peru. What happened in Cambodia? I was uh, came in from Thailand and I went to visit Angkor Wat which is one of the most beautiful places on earth for me but there was one really really changing point when I was in a market in, in Phnom Penh and in one kid specifically and I still have his image really imprinted in my mind he came up to me and I looked around and he had a tumor from his forehead down to around here in his body and I was like I kind of stood back I didn't know what to do and I went back to my hostel and I put down in my journal that the next time I go somewhere I want to uh, volunteer, do something in the local community as opposed to just me looking for the next destination. John, you know that this project is uh, about meeting people like you who've made big life changes and uh, we're, we're trying to inspire people back home. So mm. do you have do you, have an, do you have some advice to give us for yeah, the rest of our journey? Of course, yeah, great question. My advice is always follow your dream, reflect on what you've done so far, look to the future of where you want to be in the future and follow that dream. It's never too difficult, okay? When you look at, look at a task together, it's always big. Break it down into manageable chunks, look, review them all and then you just start. Start off on the easy ones, start off on the small ones and build from there. Just do bit by bit and then you always get there. And that's my advice to anyone. Would you say you've learned new things uh, working with us on this project? Over these three days, a lot of questions have been about my life from not only over the last seven years here in Peru, but also going back to my childhood in Ireland. So I would say, yeah, it's very important to always uh, look at your day and reflect over your day, reflect over your life, and to really be appreciative of all the things that have happened. So yeah, another thing I would say, you're asking me about giving advice, I would say as well, uh, learning from you guys, just follow the dreams and keep on traveling and keep on those adventures in life. Yeah, that's it. Cheers. Thank you, <laughs> thank you.
Pour arriver à Lima, rencontrer John, je ne sais pas pour toi, mais moi je trouve que c'était une sacrée première. Ah, c'est très fort C'est vraiment l'énergie qui, qui m'a marqué, et puis le fait que... Il ne il croit, croit pas à son action pour, pour faire semblant, pour faire plaisir à quelqu'un. Ah tu sens que ça lui apporte un réel bonheur. Quoi. Bah on l'a vu concrètement, hein, tu sais, avec Victor Hugo, euh, quand même qui est, un, qui est handicapé, qui euh, veut se lancer dans une carrière d'avocat. Ce n'est pas, pas évident. Et, et je pense que tu vois, Victor Hugo, il a la hauteur aussi de, de John. Mmh. C'est la même envie, l'envie de faire. Tu vois. Je suis d'accord. <rire>